Hello everyone, I'm Elf Fells, and welcome to week number two of the Pack Side League. Last time I took a narrow 1-0 victory against Hyperium and the Bolariat FC off the back of Covert Cloak Soul King. This time we're up against the Philadelphia Phantoms, coached by Lord Dexy, Lord C. Uh, sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce that. Uh, and they are also off to a 1-0 start to their season at a plus four differential, so we have to keep our guard up. Uh, my opponent's draft consists of Terrapagos, Urshifu Single Strike, Terra Captain Skeledurge, Salamence, Vaporeon, Arcaladon, Rotomo, Comfe, and Glygar. So a couple notes about this team. First, my opponent's only removal is Terrapagos, which I'm not sure wants to be spending its time in the role of a Rapid Spinner. So I think any hazards that I get up could stay up long term, which is nice. Another glaring hole in that team is the lack of speed. The speed here is actually topped out with Comfe and Salamence at base 100, so I should have no trouble winning the speed game, as long as we're both unboosted. Yeah, this team is on the slower side, but it trades that for the ability to almost always win the setup game. I have very limited experience against Terrapagos, only having played against it a few times during its short stay in OU, uh, but I'm aware that it's a very threatening setup sweeper with Calm Mind and its ability Terra Shell. Uh, I think in this matchup, it looks the best with a Calm Mind set with normal and fighting coverage. Now, that, as well as Dragon Dance Salamence, are the big setup sweepers to worry about. And looking at the rest of the team, it is full of anti setup measures, actually. Unaware Terra Skeleturge is so annoying for my team to deal with and combined with Haze Vaporeon and Priority Draining Kiss Comfey, it feels like this team was specifically built to prevent an Iron Valiant sweep. Combine that with the bulk and power of Urshifu and Arcaladon, and you've got a tough team to break through. I don't hate my matchup though. I think I can accurately predict the six Pokemon that are coming from my opponent. Uh, you've got the big four on top, which are a little too good to leave behind, I think. Uh, you have Arcaladon as a bulky breaker that has a pretty good matchup into me, and I think Comfey has to show up as a specially defensive check to Iron Valiant and Kirim. Yeah, we'll talk about Kirim's matchup in just a sec, but I think Rotom, Vaporeon, and Gligar are left behind partially because how much they're just Kirim food. Speaking of which, we might as well get into our build. Uh, we're starting with Choice Specs Kirim. I think Specs Kirim has the potential to go crazy this week. The only Freeze Dry resist on my opponent's side is Skeledurge, and the only Draco resist is Comfey. So if I guess correctly on the switch, or if Skeledurge has already teared out of its Ice resist, we are guaranteed to break something, courtesy of the sheer power of modest Specs Kirim. I expect to be spamming Ice Beam, but if Vaporeon does happen to show up, we still have Freeze Dry for it. Draco, of course, covers Skeledurge, and it's the strongest neutral move that I have. And Earth Power is mostly filler on the set, but it provides a more consistent way to hit Skeledurge and Arcaladon. I felt like I was free to go Modest here for the extra power, which we needed to 2 it KO especially defensive Comfey with Ice Beam, uh, and we still have enough speed to outrun Max Neutral Terrapagos, Arcaladon, Rotom, and Gligar. There's a lot at the base 85-86 speed tier for my opponent. Uh, like I said, this looks like an insane breaker in the matchup, uh, with the biggest downside being that it is threatened out by Salamence, so if my opponent is bold enough, I do think that this could allow Salamence to set up a Dragon Dance on my switch out, uh, so I need to build the rest of the team with that in mind. Uh, so, with that in mind, I decided to bring Choice Scarf Iron Valiant. The first few things to note about Iron Valiant in this matchup would be its poor sweeping matchup against Skeledurge and Comfey, uh, but when you look past that, you'll notice that the opponent only has one fairy resist in Skeledurge, and we can also just barely afford to run a modest nature in this matchup, thanks to outspeeding Salamence by 16 base points. So with the Scarf set, I'm mainly just trying to make sure I can always revenge KO a plus one Salamence with Moonblast, and that also makes for a pretty spammable move for the whole matchup. The only other coverage I'm running is Stab Aura Sphere, because I really want to get good damage into Arcaladon or Terrapagos, should the situation call for it. And the rest of the set is for Disruption. Choice Scarf Trick is pretty standard to cripple a defensive or setup Pokémon, but Scarf Encore might look a little redundant. However, I really like it as a way to lock something into a setup move without giving away the speed advantage of my Scarf. If Terrapago sets up Calm Mind or Rabbit Spin on a Pivot Out, for example, we can Encore and switch out to something else that can deal with that problem. Uh, even in the worst case, where my opponent feels comfortable setting up just three Encore turns, I can make a double switch back into Valiant and lock it in permanently with the Scarf. Uh, yes, that all sounds a little convoluted, but I am so afraid of the set of Terrapagos that I wanted multiple ways on this set to neutralize that threat. Moving right along though, we have Sandy Shocks, uh, which is the second Pokémon in a row that outruns my opponent's entire roster. 
Uh, this is kind of just a general offensive pivot, which looks good with Bolt Switch and Earth Power. Ground Offense looks great as another way to break Arcaladon and uh, non-Terra Skeledurge. And if my opponent wants a solid answer to Sandy Shock's dual stabs, they'll have to rely on Gligar or Rotom, uh, which may just be caught by a pivot out to Kirim. Uh, I really like that offensive pairing. Other than that, Discharge is secondary stab, and a good, uh, it has a good para chance, and Paralysis actually looks pretty good in this matchup, uh, and then we have Stealth Rock as our hazard setting. Finally, I was really stumped on what item to run. I feel like this set doesn't really depend on an item slot to function, so I just slapped a Shuka Berry on there for now to help match up against Earthquake Salamence. Uh, I'm not quite sure though, I could see this changing before the battle starts. Next up we have Slowking, and uh, there really isn't that much to say here. This is going to be a specially defensive pivot that can switch into Arcaladon. Basically, my whole plan is to switch into a hit and pivot out with a Chili into something that threatens to KO it back. The rest of the moveset kind of falls into place from there. Future Sight supports the offensive pressure from the rest of my team, Slack Off is necessary for recovery, and Icy Wind hits Salamence hard while also acting as some speed control. Uh, not too much, much else to say about Slow King other than I really hope our Caledon isn't Power Herb Electro Shot, because uh, that is guaranteed to break something on my team if it makes the right read. Next up, we have King Gambit, uh, and this fills a couple of roles on my team. Uh, the first being my switch into Urshifu with a lot of physical bulk and Terra Fairy, uh, so I'm probably going to try to Terra early here. We're also acting as a bulky setup sweeper with Swords Dance. A full sweep does depend on Skeledurge being chipped or gone, but it could be possible. Uh, we have some decent setup opportunities against something like Choice Locked Urshifu. Sucker Punch is of course there to beat the faster attackers. Terra Fairy Terra Blast is pretty good stab for the matchup. And Iron Head gives us a way to really threaten Kampei, which nothing on my team was really doing up to this point. Uh, we're invested in speed just enough to creep Skeledurge by a few points, so we have a decent chance of moving before it. Uh, not that that's going to be super useful, but I expect Skeletors to Terra, uh, and then if it's Terra, Fairy or something, we can Iron Head it before it can do anything like that. Um, so yeah, it really just depends on the, what Terra-type Skeletors goes for. Not too much else to say here, this is going to be a bulky piece with some decent endgame setup potential. And in the last slot here, we have Alolan Sandslash. The main point of this guy is Adamant Ice Shard, which alongside the rest of my prep should always prevent a full sweep from the Salamence. Other than that, the rest of the moveset is just going to be coverage and utility. Uh, while we're here, I might as well throw a rapid spin on for a removal. Earthquake makes for pretty good coverage, and Throat Shop with a Lumberry should actually help me go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Skeledurge. We can stop it from using Torch Song and negate Will-O-Wisp once. Uh, we'll see how well that works out. Uh, we do also have Slush Rush, so we can outspeed every unboosted threat whenever Snow is up from Slow King. Uh, but I do have some speed invested to match King Gambit. Uh, we're trying to scree speed creep Skeletor just a bit. Uh, lastly, I don't expect to use it, but Terra Ground does boost the power of Earthquake, so maybe in some endgame scenarios, a Slush Rush Earthquake sweep is possible. Not counting on that, though. Uh, so that is going to do it for the team build. Hopefully this group of six is what it takes to bring our season up to 2-0. So without further ado, let's hop into the battle. Uh, yeah, let's exchange terror types while we're here. Sand slash ground. King Gambit. Fairy. Skeletors is ground. That is a decently common type for that Pokemon. Ah, uh, but here we have. Let's write the Pokemon down. Uh, we have Terrapagos. Oh, we do have Rotom. I'm kind of surprised by that one. Let's see what didn't show up. Uh, we have Arcaladon. That thing is so scary. Skeledurge. Oh, there's a Vaporeon on there too. What the heck? Urshifu. And Vaporeon. Okay, interesting. No Comfey, which I thought would have to come. Uh, there's actually no Draco resist on this team from Kyurem, so that's cool. Um, what's the other thing? Oh, no Salamence. Uh, means that... Oh. Means that Sand Slash is kind of useless outside of maybe checking Rotom at this point. Huh, okay. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, Kirim looks like it's gonna go off. Uh, I'm gonna lead King Gambit, and um, provided it feels safe to, I'm gonna get my Terra. Um, worst thing that happens is Rotom lead? That would be pretty bad. Um, but I have. Kyurem to switch into it. I think that's fine. 
Alright, good luck, have fun to Lord XIE. I'm not trying to pronounce it. Uh, Terra Ground Skeletor, it shouldn't make enough sense. Uh, the main changes I made to my team, um, Valiant is now- oh my gosh, it's a Trap Ghost to start? Okay. Uh, but Valiant is now timid because of specifically this, actually, Rock Polish Tropagos. Uh, but let's see here. King Gambit. Um, versus this Tropagos. I mean, I'm gonna Terra. And then I should just get off uh, these are both the same base power, but I'd love to break this thing's, uh, you know, whatchamacallit. Let's Iron Head? Why not? Yeah, this is specifically Terra Fairy just so I can wall Urshifu down the line, hopefully. That's the goal. It just goes for- oh, it's- Looks like more utility then. Okay, goes for rocks. That is fine. This iron head uh, after Terra Shell should do 15 to 18 ish. That's about right. Uh, and it's not leftovers. Okay. Probably boots, is my guess. Do I switch? Do I. I don't know. Um, I could go Sand Slash and try to spin. That's pretty free to do, actually. Just because there's no ghost type here. Oh wait, oh sorry, this is the dirge, but we kinda beat that. <laughs> kinda. I'm, I'm gonna try to swords dance though. Ice beam. Oh, how much is this good? Ice beam 207 to 140. Uh-oh. Oh jeez. Oh, okay, well. 207 to 145. Okay. That is. I believe 62 points of damage. Which looks about in line with um, modest max special attack. God. Oh my god. I mean, this is a decent opportunity to try and un. like, thaw. Oh my god. I mean, I guess I, I Swords Dance again. Ah, uh, this is bad. Ah, uh, okay. Alright. Um, what do I think this set might even be? Ugh, that sucks. Um, I'll just go... Slow King here. Whatever, right? Like, you're probably not going there, Shifu, so... Whatever. Power Gem. Okay, so, um, Ice Beam Power Gem. That was an unfortunate start. Um, okay, so you're, you really aren't too much set up. I'm gonna Chili. Probably go Valiant, and then, um... Honestly, I don't have too much use for my Scarf. So I might as well... Oh, it's Arcaladon. Okay. I was gonna say I might as well go Valiant and, um... Trick. But now, my options are like... Earth Power on Sandy Shocks. I'm running Sash on so Shocks, actually. And that is mainly to uh, just be able to switch in once on our Kaladon, theoretically, but... Rocks are up now. I didn't expect those to be able to go up that easy. Um, Sand Slash could come in, actually. But we're giving it stamina boosts. This is probably best for Rotom, actually. Hmm. Or I could just go Valiant. Or just Shocks, because Shocks definitely won KOs with uh, Earth Power. Uh, breaking the Sash is unfortunate, but honestly, what are you gonna do?
I think I'm gonna get my rocks up here. I feel like you're threatened out. Right? Also, you switched Arcalion directly into Slowking. That's weird. Uh, but yeah, you're switching out, right? And let's say you're, like, super AV. But, um... We would just have to deal with that, I guess. Oh, it does stay in. Oh, no. Okay, what are you doing? It does Draco. Oh, jeez. Oh, I lived! Okay. Uh, 150 down to 8 means... 142 points of damage. We can help that. 142 is a low roll for max special attack modest. Okay. Uh, I just earth power, sure. Oh, you're gonna give it to me. Uh, that is definitely some kind of assault vest, yeah. Uh, I am so happy to, like, take that down to low health, though. Uh, okay, unfortunately, shocks does go down, but we got a rocks up. Um, our Caledon... Is shocks, uh, but this thing is low, which is very important. It's at like twenty-ish, right? So um, I think Sand Slash Earthquake does take it out. Lone Sand Slash uh, against uh, this Arcaladon max HP, we'll say, and plus one defense. Yeah, uh, Earthquake should do enough. Yeah. Alright, so, um, I think that's that's pretty much what we do. Earthquake, take it out. Uh, so, Sand Slash. KO's Arc Caledon. Big threat down. Uh, Slow King's a lot less pressured now, which is nice. The Vaporeon. Okay. Alright, well, I'm definitely spinning. Yeah. I just, I do need to get rid of these rocks for Kiram. And then, um, Kiram can just come in after this, honestly. Scald. Um, I do have Lum, so if this burns, we're good. Snow's gone. And I just go Kiram for sure. Um. <laughs> It was super tempting, oh, it is tempting to go Team Gambit and potentially get thawed, but I'm not gonna... I don't think I want to mess with that. Could go, um, Slow King? Uh, a flip turn would be disastrous here, right? That's the problem. Flip turn out into, um, what's the thing, Urshifu? I would hate that. Um, uh, let's just do Slow King though. Hope you're not pivoting. Guess I could have sacked Sand Slash. That would have been an option. Hmm, we'll see what happens though. Just another Scald, uh, which I don't mind. If I get burned, so be it. Cool, no burn. Uh, and now we have a pretty nice, safe pivot into, um, the thing, um, Kiram. So let's chill you out. It's a wish. That's fine. Anything else I'd be interested in doing here? I mean, Valiant would 
trick isn't too bad, considering there's no more... Um, no, there's no Salamence in the first place. Trick looks a lot better, I can get rid of my Scarf. I don't need the Scarf for much. Uh, but I'm just gonna go with Kyurem, this is my, a pretty good breaking opportunity. I guess that this is Max Badef. Uh, let's just uh, attempt a freeze dry. Play it safe here. Oh, it's um, really okay. We take out Vaporeon. No protect or anything. Okay. No fanfare at all. <laughs> uh, but nice. Kiram KOs Vaporeon. Uh, please. That is Urshifu. Yeah. I forgot I need to write the... Well, I don't think I need to write the moves down, but I might as well. Flash Cannon from that. Earthquake from that. Alright. Okay, well, I'll admit, it's really not much of a check anymore. Oh, it's frozen. That sucks so bad. Um... Uh, I can sack... You, I can attack you. No matter what, I have Scarf Valiant. So if this sets up on the switch, I think this is fine. So you turn 111 down to 89. 22 points of damage. And a U turn. Okay, it's not adamant band. Um, that could very well be jolly band. Oh, and it's uh, leftover skeleton. So that's cool. Uh, works for me. Um, my skeleton switchings are not great. Let me tell you that. But yeah, Jolly Band would do that much. Um, probably Adamant some other, maybe some other boosting item, but I'm guessing Jolly Band in that case, uh, which is good to know. Is this guy even worth keeping around? <laughs> uh, I should try to preserve it, right? I feel like I should try. Um, Tropios from, uh, yeah. Can drop a Draco here. Uh, Kyurem's fairly safe from anything the Skeletor wants to do. Uh, and like dropping a Draco is cool. Oh, and it's even going to be Terra Ground. Um, oh, you actually don't have any Ice Beam this anymore, so why even Draco? Uh, this does depend on what you're going to do. I should cal I should make sure I'm have to calculate it up. Terra Blast Ground. Shouldn't do too much, right? You know it's leftovers. Uh, 209 to 130. Ooh, a decent amount. Oh, let's see, 130. Uh, uh, 79 points of damage from Terra Ground, Terra Blast. Um, oh, that's decently invested, actually, shoot. Alright, uh, regardless, I click Ice Beam. That is so free here. Um, you have to sack something, right? Oh, I'll take this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's also not, um, boots. I don't know if it, we figured out an item earlier. Okay. Uh, I mean, this is cool. Uh, we just... We take you out. Yeah. Not the Kyurem KOs. Um, the thing, the Terrapagos. Ice Beam. All 
Alright, so I imagine Urshifu comes in here. I just go King Gambit until I go down, honestly. I think I just keep King Gambit in. Unless you bring in some kind of big setup threat. There you are. So I think I definitely figured out this is Jolly Band. So this is gonna be fine, yeah. Uh, can't set up on me, and like I keep saying, even if it does, if you have um, Swords Dance and Trailblaze, I still have uh, a Valiant in the back. With the Scarf. The blow. The next one probably kicks me out. I actually can't tell. Um, Valiant can come there right in here, but honestly, like, this, this King Gambit, this is so unfortunate, but King Gambit is such dead weight here. I, I just, uh, I don't care. <laughs> you can take me out, yeah. Alright, Urshifu. Okay, that's King Gambit. With, 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 low. What a great first two weeks for King Gambit, right? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, Moonblast, um... Yeah, we just Moonblast. All that's left here is Rotom, Skeletors, and Urshifu. I'm sure Skeletors can take a few hits. Uh, considering I'm timid. Uh, but we can deal with that, honestly. I actually, I like the name, Lewis and Skeletor, very cute. Could have tricked the Scarf onto this, but, you know, let's check out damage. Oh, nice damage, alright. Um, and there is a case to be made for Valiant just cleaning this up. Uh, I am a little worried about the Rotom. Alright, Valiant is going to throw Skeletor. Uh, with... Um, wow. Yep, Rotom. Um, I'm just worried about a Thunder Wave. I have plenty of sacks to make. Um, Kiram could go down here. Well, Kiram's not going down to anything Rotom does. It's just that if Rotom pivots out, then Urshifu takes me out, and then I come in with Valiant again and I click a couple Moon Blasts, and that should wrap up the game pretty much. Yeah. So, Volt Switch is probably your best play, given that I'm switching in here. The Thunderbolt. 130 down to 91. I guess we can calc that, right? <laughs> oh, you have got to be kidding me. Alright, I mean, 39 points of damage. Let's just check it out. Go to Mo. Thunderbolt. Uh, 39. Yeah, max special attack. Probably Scarf. Uh, but yeah, we just, um, we ice beam. Yeah. Alright. Um, Urshifu comes in. These are your last two Pokemon. Ice Beam does connect. Is that KO? It does. That's great. Urim KOs. Urshifu. Ice Beam. And it just wrote him. Oh, we were fine. Yeah. <laughs> Spex Ice Beam one more time and finish this game off, Kiram. Ah, that's decent damage. <laughs> Ice Beam! Nice. Kiram KOs Rotom with an Ice Beam, and that is going to seal the game in, I believe, a 4 0 victory. Yes.
All right, that was great. Uh, that actually worked out really well. Tropagos uh, turned out to not be that scary, which is awesome. Uh, no Salamence was great. Caragron Skeletors was great. It was just Kiram food. The whole team ended up being Kiram food. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's going to be 4-0 win for week two, and that'll bring us up to 2-0 for the season. Uh, very excited. Uh, next week, uh, we're up against, uh, I believe, a super famous guy uh, and uh, his rain team. So, that's going to be a fun one. Hope we do well there. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.